Hello, this is Tim Law with Playing It Forward Coaching, always encouraging you to look for your self-reliance in everything you do. If you will get a marketable skill, chase that skill with a solid work ethic, be a people uh, team, people and team player, go the extra mile, you'd be amazed at what you can accomplish in this country. Uh, big thank you to over 470 people that are subscribed to this channel, Playing It Forward Coaching. If you haven't already, please do so. I'd really appreciate it. I have a friend of mine here uh, who I've known for, uh, well, a number of decades now. Great guy, great sense of humor, uh, phenomenal uh, work ethic. He's accomplished amazing things in his life and career. A, a good, good friend of mine, uh, Kevin Flynn from Lakewood, Pennsylvania, originally, where we first met each other. So, Kevin, welcome, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Like Tim had said, we had met. Tim was coming in to be the high school wrestling coach. And he uh, taught my brother how to wrestle. And then I was a senior and I was going on to college that last year at Hancock Central. So like Tim said, we've known each other. Somebody's getting older, Tim. I'm not sure who is, but at least <laughs> I'd say close to 45 years. You know, we've been friends for a long time, mm -hmm. going to different events together. We used to go to the U.S. Open for the tennis, which is always a blast. And going to see tennis matches down in Philadelphia. So it's been a nice it's a nice relationship. You know, we've been together talking, being friends for a long time. And that sometimes anymore is rare, right? You don't get that as much anymore. People are so much into doing different things and not taking time for their friends that you kind of get lost once in a while. So it is nice to have, I could say Tim's been my lifelong friend, which is really nice to say. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. I feel the same way. You know, as you know, I've got three brothers and you're like uh, a fourth brother to me for sure. And, uh, uh, as ironic as, and I, and I don't want to uh, leave out the idea of how, what an incredible football player you were in high school. And I always said, if you, if, I, if you had been a junior when I had first come to Hancock instead of a senior, I know I would have got you on the wrestling mat, you know. But uh, anyway, the, uh, you know, I, I, I can remember one time you were playing football there in high school and you basically, you know, punted a ball like end zone to end zone. And, uh, you know, given your, your size and skill and incredible quickness, uh, you were a heck of a football player for sure. Yeah, no, and Tim, I really appreciate it. It's funny, you know, you get by on your ability, and as you get older, you kind of have to learn, like you're saying, that continuous life process of learning and developing your skills. But yeah, I enjoy playing football. I still watch it today, not as much. It's uh, almost a little bit too much, right? I like the games, but all the pregame things are almost just like carnival atmosphere, and I, that, I don't really care for that that much, but I do enjoy watching the game, so. Sure. And uh, Kevin, tell us a little bit about your background, you know, growing up on a dairy farm, you guys had a 380, 400 acres, something like that on your farm. And, you know, uh, your, your dad, George, was, was incredible. Uh, you know, all you guys, you and your brother, Robbie and brother Brian all worked the farm growing up. How did that impact you and your life and your work ethic? Well, I think, you know, it's interesting, Tim, you bring up a very good point. That lifestyle for children anymore is diminishing, right? Because there's less and less farms there's not as many kids working the farms and ours was a family farm. So like you said, it was about 400 acres. It was all self managed by my dad, my mom and ourselves. There was really the labor force was our family. Right? So five o'clock in the morning, I could hear my dad getting up to go to work and I could see my dad going to bed at nine o'clock at night. And that wasn't three, four or five days a week. That was seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't occasionally that was all the time. So Growing up on the farm, you had to learn to do a few things. One was prioritize your work, make sure you got done what was important, and make sure you, you know, got done what dad needed to have done for the day. But it kind of serves you well when you become a person in the general workforce, where you basically see people talk about how hard they work, but they don't have a frame of reference on what hard work really can be. And for me, working on the farm, I enjoyed it. I'll probably retire back into that area. My brother, Robbie, has a, uh, a stone quarry in the area. I'd like to probably stay up in that area. I like it up in there. And maybe we'll have like cattle and some, you know, beef cattle and things of that nature. But it really teaches you to be self-reliant, self-sufficient, and to think for yourself. Right? You have to fix situations. You can't, you know, you're not going to go to YouTube and find a, a video on how to fix something in the field. Like when we were farming and haying whatever it was, taking care of cattle. It really teaches you that if you want to do it, you can do it. You don't, there's not a limit to the amount of effort you could put into something. 
You might not have an interest or maybe you'd have a different thing you'd like to do. But if you're interested and you want to make something succeed, you certainly can do it. And I saw my dad every day. He faced, I mean, incredibly difficult circumstances with the weather and the, you know, that's a tough area up in there during the winter time. And work was always ahead of you. I mean, when you were done haying in the spring or summer, you were cutting wood all winter, right? So it was not a nonstop work atmosphere, but it brought you closer as a family. And it really taught you that if you put your mind to it, and I see it today in my work, I work in heavy environmental cleanup work, construction work. I've seen it where if you apply yourself and really dedicate yourself to the task, you can accomplish quite a bit. And that's what it was every day on the farm. There was always a long list of things to do and you had to work towards getting those done. I mean, you couldn't let, you couldn't wait till tomorrow. That's the phrase you hear so much anymore. I'll get to that tomorrow or the next day or next week. That just wasn't the way it was. Mm -hmm. So it taught you stay with it, work with it. And you don't have to <clears throat> kill yourself, but you have to apply yourself every day to what you're doing. Yeah, well said, Kevin. And, uh, uh, Lakewood, PA, just for people that are listening, is in the northeast corner of uh, Pennsylvania, uh, pretty close to the uh, the New York border, you know, just across the uh, Delaware River, you're in New York State. So just, just for a little um, clarity there. Also, I'll, I'll say something about your dad, Kevin, it was amazing, was I can remember, you know, helping you guys do some hay, and, and here it is, I'm in my 20s, I'm, I'm, you know, hitting a lot of, I'm doing a lot of wrestling in these open tournaments and everything. I mean, I was in as good a shape wrestling-wise as I've ever been in my life. And I can remember going up in that hay mound with your dad. Here's your dad in his mid sixties. And I'm telling you, I had to hustle like crazy to stay up with him. I mean, the guy was unbelievable as far as his ability to, to uh, you know, do in, in incredible uh, physical labor, even in his mid sixties and beyond. I mean, it was just um, amazing. That's for sure. Yeah, he was very, uh, and he wasn't a big man. He was probably five foot eight, five foot nine, but his strength was pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. you, he had his arms and hands were very strong because he used to milk cattle at five, and well, probably six to seven years old by hand. Yeah. Now you try that for 30, 40, 50 cattle. My dad had hands like pipe vices, right? He was very strong, very determined. And he was the kind of guy that, he would do what needed to be done to get things done. He just didn't say, I'm too tired. I only saw him once in my life uh, leave the barn. He was so sick. I finished the milking for him. But Tim, that was 45 years. He never was out of that. And I'm not saying maybe some people don't like that lifestyle, but he liked it. He enjoyed it. He was his own boss and he worked and worked and worked. And eventually he did <laughs> kind of retire. He helped my brother at the farm, you know, when Robbie was starting up the dairy cattle business. So. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing about your dad, he was, uh, he was a Marine in world war two and, uh, you know, uh, had to go overseas as far as the, uh, you know, some of the fights against the Japanese and everything. So, I mean, he saw things that, uh, you know, the rest of us, you know, can't even, you know, begin to imagine. And, uh, it certainly was a, um, uh, you know, a phenomenal individual for sure. Yeah, I think he gave us what everybody needs to be successful. It's the discipline, the desire, and the work ethic. Like you said before, if you want to be good at what you do, you practice that and you put your time into it. But like you said, dad had worked over, he was overseas for a couple of years in World War II, and he never really talked about that much. He did mention one day that uh, you don't know what it's like to see dump trucks full of bodies being disposed of. So you're right. People don't understand that, and people just have no frame of reference for that because it's so foreign to them, right? But he had seen a lot. He had grown up in a, you know, that's a tough area to grow up. It's hard work. It's all manual labor. So he really, uh, you know, he really exemplified what it was to be a successful farmer and also a, a very good worker. I mean, his, his herd of cattle, Tim, and this is a long time ago, was the number one rate uh, dairy herd in Maine County, Pennsylvania. Wow, wow. And it was 13 or 1400 farms. He was very good and very ahead of his time. It's not a sophisticated thing, but he was very good with his cattle, very good with genetics, breeding cattle for bringing out certain traits, things you have to have a pretty good head on your shoulders to understand and execute. So he was a very good example to us in yeah, a lot of yeah. ways. Well, and the other thing I loved about your dad was he, he did have a great sense of humor, as you and I have shared numerous uh, 
commentaries that he's made, you know. So how about your mom, Kevin, uh, Pat? She was uh, an incredible lady as well. What can you say about your uh, your mother? Yeah, my mom, you know, she was a person, she was dad's partner, right? And he treated her as an equal, but back in those days, the 50s, 60s, I don't think a lot of men really thought women were their equal. But my mom worked side by side with my father for basically her entire life until he had passed on. She would be down the barn at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, milking cattle with my dad, taking care of paperwork and things that needed to be done for the registration of our cattle with an association. Tim, I can tell you, she could, <laughs> she could work as much as any man that I ever saw, unloading hay. She was really his partner, and he would not have been as successful without her. She was a, a tough woman, right? I mean, she definitely had expectations that, you know, you follow the rules, you do the right things by people, you don't, you know, stay out of trouble. But she was good. You know, she really had a, a big heart in a lot of ways. I saw it more with her grandchildren from my younger brother. But she was really somebody that if you need to have something done, you could always count on her to get something done, too. So that was the trait that was very dominant in both my parents. And they kind of pass it on to my brothers and, my, and myself. So yeah. you can see that that's the way you operate. Do the right thing and the right things will happen for you. Sure. And you have an older brother, uh, Brian, and a younger brother, Robbie. Uh, how, how instrumental were they on the farm, Kevin? Yeah, I think the thing was, obviously, Brian was the older son, so he worked with dad a lot until he left to go into the army. Uh, I was the middle son, so I worked with dad for quite a while through college. And Robbie helped out a lot, too, when he was on the farm. And he actually came back from Rutgers to run the farm, the dairy farm. So if we didn't have all five of us, that's mom, dad, my two brothers, myself, there would not be a farm there. I mean, it's very easy to say, and eh, it's too much work. Let's just let this go. But when it's your own, it's your family's property and it's your legacy, that's third or fourth generation on that farm. You just don't say you can't get it done. You will get it done, right? And that's what we're also taught. <clears throat> I mean, I'm proud to, that I love going back up there. My, my grandfather was there. My uh, great-grandfather was there. My father, and that was their life, right? So that's, well, that's our legacy for that area, so. Sure, and Kevin, uh, because of uh, the type of work that you do right now, uh, as far as your uh, company is concerned, are you are you able to say the name of the company you work for? Is that allowable? Or I, yeah, I'm not really sure, Tim. But okay. they're a big they're a big engineering construction firm. They're uh, they do about fifteen billion dollars a year of revenue. Uh -huh. They're into all sorts of different things. They're international. A very good firm. Uh, you know, they do. I do environmental cleanup work. That's where I've kind of made my living the last. Well, I don't know, 30 years probably, uh -huh. but they're into nuclear work, highway work, heavy highway work, bridges, wastewater treatment. They're into all sorts of different things. Right. And they're a good firm, right? They're, they try and be the leader. They're probably one of the larger ones. They're underneath like a Bechtel type of company. They're not as big. Uh -huh. They're a big outfit. And they yeah. actually they do 15 billion or billion a year. And they've got about 55, 60,000 employees. So. Yeah, you know, they're, they're huge, obviously. And uh, Kevin, what advice would you give? I mean, you see you hire uh, people coming into that industry and everything. What advice would you give to some of these uh, teens, young adults, uh, as far as, uh, you know, successfully entering, you know, a very, uh, a, a very good field, actually, uh, you know, certainly in this day and age? What, what advice would you give some of the younger ones coming up? Well, I think the thing is, too, you when you... Like when you come in to interview with me, I, I really listen to what you say and how you present yourself and the ability to be successful. Some of it's predicated on the fact that you have to be able to convey your thoughts and your ideas, get those across in a co uh, coherent fashion and really get to know who that person is. A lot of kids, we had a couple graduate from the state universities, nice kids, but no skills as far as interviewing, really not really not being able to tell their story. So it's hard to judge who they are as a person. And it can't always be just what you say. It's what you do. But a lot of kids have to be enthusiastic. They should have some type of a work background. And, they have, and the biggest thing I've seen, you have to pay your dues. Right? You don't start at the top. You work towards the top. And a lot of the kids today, they want to be the manager and they want to run the stuff. And that's just not quite the way it is. But for kids that are science and technology, engineering and um, let's see, STEM type people. There's a marketplace is huge. We're dying to find people 
and if people have that background, we are very interested in talking to them. But the biggest thing is just be yourself, be honest, say what you do, and don't make up things because it's pretty easy during an interview to kind of just cross check people. We had a gentleman one day, he came to the site, and um, not that it was, it was a, but I said, I said, did you drive? He's, oh, no, I didn't drive. I said, oh, don't you have a license? He goes, no, I got that taken away from a, from a drunk driving charge. And I think, you know, wow. And you find it out that way, not that he was hiding anything. He just didn't present it, not that you would. But when he says that, you kind of think about it. It's like, really, what are his values and what is his priorities as a younger person? Sure. What I've tried to do for my staff, I'm running a, a big project right now in New Jersey. And I try and really mentor and coach the younger people because I really didn't have a mentor or coach. But the younger people, I look at them, I'm like, we need to give them opportunities to grow and develop. Uh, a good manager looks to groom his replacement. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what you look to do. And you try and give these people opportunities. I've got four or five, second, third year out of college. These I hired uh, three of them. Three have been great. We had one that we did have to let go just because – he didn't have, you know, it's interesting. He never had a work ethic. He just, uh, Monday through Friday, it was his idea of work. And I asked him one weekend to work. And he said, no, I've got some video games and football I want to watch this weekend, which for me being the boss, probably not the best answer to tell me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But, you know, it's very uh, <clears throat> fundamentally very uh, lazy, right? Yeah. You, got, you got to show some hunger and some desire. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody can kind of just, you know, go through the motions, but when things are tough, that's when you kind of figure out who's who. And the three that I've kept have all been great. We've had very successful work in this project. Uh, they've been instrumental in it, and I've made sure that people above me know that. Mm -hmm. So they have opportunities for promotions and just trying to grow them as people and as, as employees. Sure, sure. Well, and Kevin, if you, if you can clear it as far as your... Uh company is concerned i certainly wouldn't mind doing an interview with any of those guys if it if it's appropriate for you so you know just check and see what see what the thoughts are and if it works great if it doesn't no worries yeah no i mean like i said these are um they're they're very good people they want to learn and they want to be involved i mean a lot of people just don't want to put in their time because when you wake up one day then you're 60 and all you really did was put in your time you mm -hmm. never tried to excel at anything right you just survival is good but it's not the gauge of greatness right you survived is that really what is the you know you got through the week that's exactly how you your high mark for the job or for the week is just getting through it i don't yeah. know if that's really good so yeah no i definitely agree well kevin this has been fantastic uh uh appreciate it very much can you hang for a minute or two uh while sure. we uh, uh yeah. chat offline here yeah 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 great Thanks. It was awesome. All right, thanks, Jim. It's good talking to you. Take always, care. Always good, Cap. Thank you.